what I'm doing is I'm zeroing my bit out this is a common practice with hobby CNCers this paper test will allow you to make sure that you get just a tiny bit of distance between the bit and the material there's a much better way to do this in fact if you're doing a lot of tool changes it's almost a must let me show you what I've rigged up here I've got a grounding clip that I'm going to attach to the CNC machine and I've got a metal plate here with a wire on it put it underneath the bit click the auto tool zero button the bit will automatically go down touch the material zero itself out and then retract and I'm zeroed let's test that theory I'm gonna go to zero on the Z look at that so if you want to learn how to do this I'll teach you how on this edition of the Guru Brew that's coming up next hang out for that okay let me start out here by showing you my controller board this is the hobby CNC controller board and yours may vary but you'll get the idea the pins over here are the ones for the motors and there's a step and a direction for the three different motors on the opposite side of the board over here there's spots that you can plug in um, switches for your home positions and other accessories so you need to find a pin that's available to you I'm gonna use pin 15 I've already used um, three of these pins for my home positions and so pin 15 and 13 are available so I'm gonna go with 15 and then ground so that's the first step is you have to figure out how what pins your machine has available and then you have to hook the wire directly to the uh, pin 15 or whatever pin you use and then ground and then bring them up to your table and then on the pin the way I have mine set up I've got this little piece of aluminum angle and this is 0.06 thickness any piece of metal will work as long as it's conductive um, you could use a piece of circuit board if you wanted and attach a wire. I drilled and tapped mine and I just run a length of wire to a banana plug and then from the banana plug I went to pin 15 on my board here and then you need another wire for the ground and I did the same thing with the banana plug and then just a clip that I can clip on the chassis of the um, CNC router. So basically those are the tools you're going to need once you have those connected, I'll show you how to test them in just a moment. Let's go ahead and set our software up now. Okay, I have my Mach 3 open. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Config tab here and go to Ports and Pins, which is here. And if you click on the Input Signal here, look on down till you find Probe. And here's my Probe here and you can see it's not on it's off because there's a red X I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on and then we have to set up what port it's on now normally if you have one parallel port on your computer it'll just be port one if in doubt check your documentation and then the pin number is the one that we talked about having you know to bring up for this thing here and mine is 15 so I'm just gonna put a 15 in there and then you want to click on this active load button just turn that on and the rest of this can remain the same hit apply for that okay now there's one other thing that you have to do in the description to this video I'll put a link to a text file and the text file looks like this and we're gonna copy and paste this into our Mach 3 and I'll show you where in just a moment let's go through this code this code is visual basic code and it's all commented so you can go through here and see what each line does but there's only really a few places that you have to change for your own machine 
Now you're going to want to take a set of calipers and you're going to want to measure the thickness of your plate and determine exactly how thick it is and that will go right in here where where it says 2 comma 0 0.060 that's the thickness of my plate if it was a quarter inch you know I'd put 0.25 or whatever yours is so make sure that you change that number right there there's a couple other numbers here that you should probably change right here this P3 is a delay and this will allow you to get this thing in position before the bit starts moving after you press the button you don't have to have a delay in there but it's a good idea to get the uh, plate in position after you push the button and you know settle it in so that's the delay another couple of numbers that you might want to change are this Z minus four point right here this is how far it will travel before it gives up I've got about five inches of travel in my Z, so I'll allow it to go down four inches before it gives up. It's just uh, like a little safety if it goes too far. If you have a three inch travel, make it two, that sort of thing. After you learn how to use this, you'll understand more what these numbers do. And then on this F4 number, this is your feed rate, and that's how fast it will go down to touch the plate. So I'm only going four inches a minute, real slow. And I forgot to mention, if, you're, if your native units that you're using are metric, go ahead and use all metric through and through, like on this number, this .060, use a metric number if you're using metric. If you're using inches, go ahead and go through with inches, but don't mix the numbers is what I'm trying to get at. And then the last number that you could change if you wanted to is this number right here, this F50. When it's all done, I like to set my feed rate to 50, which is around half of what I normally run. Usually the program that you're running will set the G code for the feed rate, but uh, in case it was missing, I like to manually set it here just in case. So you might want to put in just like half of what your normal feed rate is. You could always boost it up later. So those are all the changes that you really need to make. And if you were to change just one, make sure that you change this number right here for the thickness of your plate. So once you've made changes, go ahead and copy that code. So I'm back at my Mach 3. I'm going to go under the Operator tab. I'm going down to Edit Button Script here. And if you notice, this Reference All Home button's flashing, the Display Mode button's flashing, and this Auto Tool Zero is flashing. Click on the Auto Tool Zero button, because that's the one we're going to program. And then if you click in this area, this is where our code will go. You may have something in here, you know, I have not yet implemented. I'm just going to delete everything in that box completely. And then I'm going to paste that code in that we just played with. And there's our code for the routine for the Visual Basic. And then make sure that you go ahead and save that. Save. And then go ahead and shut Mach 3 down and then restart it. Okay, I've got my Mach 3 opened again. Let's go ahead and reset the machine. And we're going to come up to the Diagnostic tab, Alt 7, and click it. And we're going to test to make sure that our probes are connected properly. Make sure that you've got your probes all connected up. And what you're going to do is touch these together like this. And make sure that the digitized light right here where my arrow is. Mine's not on right now because I'm not connected. But this is pretty important and I'll show you the steps when we go over to the machine again but you're just to touch these together short them out and make sure that that digitizes lit every time you touch it and if it is then you know you're good to go okay that's all there is to the setup let's go over to the machine and go ahead and use it that's coming up as you can see on the side of my workbench that my router's on this is my touch plate and i've got it set in this little holder here and the wires come up and go into these banana plug female connectors and that's so I can remove this if I want to and I actually brought the wires up from my control box on the bottom there and it comes up and goes into this plate 
and then I can just pull it out of this holster here when I need them makes it convenient to use so let's go ahead and hook this up here's my tool with the wire hooked up to it and I'm gonna go ahead and put it under the the bit here and this is the clip for my ground and I like to put it on the metal part of the actual router now make sure that your router is grounded out to your bit um, I used to have a plastic router on the other machine and it wasn't grounded out so what I had to do is take this clip and attach it directly to the bit it, you may have to do that it just depends on your setup now something I want to bring your attention to is you should put your machine in the diagnostic mode when you're first doing this it's the alt 7 or the diagnostics tab and if I touch this metal on here you can see that that LED for the digitizer is lighting up and that's a good test to make sure that you're connecting before you go ahead and use the auto zero tool because if it's not connecting you know you can just break your bit a lot of times what I like to do is I'll set the auto tool zero let it go down and I have my my finger on the escape key just in case I notice it not stopping I can hit it anyway after I'm sure that this is connected here which it is I'll go ahead and put it back in the program run position and you can see if I zero it right here just for a demonstration I'll zero it where it's at when I click this button right here it'll wait for those seconds that I told it in the program and then it will go down till it reaches the plate I got my hand on the escape button just in case it touched the material it zeroed the machine and then it retracted up one inch and you can see in my DRO on the Z it's set at one inch if I remove my plate and I tell Z to go to zero let's see if it did a good job look at that perfect so that's how it's done hey I hope you got uh, some use out of this video if you did give us a thumbs up comments down below if you are interested in seeing more of these or have any questions thanks for watching we'll see you next time bye for now hey guys this is Steve thanks for watching hey don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment see ya